the next brand new feature in vMix 18 is data sources. Data sources allows you to bring in data from Excel, CSV, Google Sheets, RSS, text, and XML, and have these automatically updated in real time. So you can have these data sources on the local computer or on the network. So to demonstrate this, we'll bring back the desktop capture again, and we'll click this little uh, three uh, barred icon, also called a hamburger menu, that has a whole lot of different data source options available. So we'll select, you can go to vMix Social, you can open up Title Designer, but we're gonna go to Data Sources Manager, uh, Data Sources Manager here today. And we can add as many data sources as we like. So you can have data coming in from a whole lot of different places, both on the internet and locally. Uh, for this example, we're going to choose RSS. RSS is a common uh, format for feeds on the internet, particularly for blogs. So we want to bring in the titles from our own blog. And to do that, we simply type in the website address for the feed, which is blog.vmix.com slash feed. So you can select a URL here for RSS, uh, or if it's a, a spreadsheet, you could browse to a spreadsheet file if you added that, or a text file, or XML can be on the internet as a URL, or it can be a file. There's a whole lot of different ways you can use data sources. But for this example, we're just gonna bring in an RSS feed. We we'll click R uh, OK, and after a couple of seconds, the list here will populate with all of the information we have in our blog. As you can see, we can see all the different titles. And it brings it in as just a standard table, like you might see on a spreadsheet. So you have the title, you have the link, you have the publishing date, and all of this data is available for use with titles. So what we can do right now is go, okay, we've set up our data source. Let's set it up and assign it to a title. So I can go to Add Input, I can go to Title, and I can choose one of these templates. Let's just choose this one. Now I can assign the headline of this title to the data source. Now let's bring up the title right here so you can see it live. Now I can simply click data source and from the drop down box select RSS. And you can see here in the preview it has automatically brought in the title of it. Um, so it will automatically bring them in in the order of the columns. So this is this is headline here is column number one and description is column number two. So it brought in title, which is column number one in the data source. But you can customize that. As you can see here, I can select the title or I could select the description or I could select the publishing date, uh, which is the date that the blog item was posted. But I'm just gonna choose title for this example. And finally, I can select format here, which is a, you don't have to change this. You can leave it by default, but I can put in here blog title at the start and as you can see in the preview it includes the data with some of our own text but let's just leave it as the title like so uh, and I click OK and now we have the title uh, and as you see here the title is using a bit more text than this particular template and you can use vmix title designer to design your own templates with font sizes that are a little bit smaller and of course I can edit the font size here let's just let's uh, make it a little bit bigger Nope, slightly too big. There we go. Live stream continuously to Facebook Live. That was one of our blog posts. And for description, I can choose another field in the data source. So let's choose RSS and let's choose the publishing date. Um, and I can also format this using the uh, date formats. There's information in our help file on how to format it. But let's just say we want the day, the month, and the year, there we go, 11th of October 2016 was when this particular post was put up. Live stream continuously to Facebook Live 11th of October 2016. We've just used two fields from the data source. And as you saw here, you can change the fields to have multiple different sources. You could have one field assigned to RSS, one to spreadsheets, the list goes on and on. So now we've assigned that, what about when the data changes? Well, the data will automatically update according to what you set in the data sources manager. So you can see here, it currently says it will update every 5,000 milliseconds. So if you have a data source like a spreadsheet that somebody is editing remotely and they're constantly editing the data, you could set this to update every 
you know, 500 milliseconds to update twice per second. I would recommend uh, to set the update time to uh, as long as necessary for performance reasons. So if you don't expect the data to update more than once per second, set that to 1,000. So in this example, it automatically updates every 5,000 milliseconds. Now what you can do is you could have that remote spreadsheet operator just updating the first row of the spreadsheet, this row right here. And because uh, it's the, the first row and it's currently selected, that's what will update in all of your data sources. So if you're setting up scoreboard data, you would just use a single row for all the scoreboard data. But if you have multiple rows of data that you want to select through throughout the show, you can do that from this interface simply by pointing and clicking the particular rows. I can use these buttons here to move between each of these rows, or I can even assign keyboard or MIDI shortcuts to move between the data. And I can also automate this. I can click the Auto Next button, and every five seconds, it will move between each row in the production. So if you just have a feed of data from a particular source, and you just want it to rotate through throughout the show, you can use this to do exactly that. And it'll just rotate through the data like so. And all of these settings you see here, auto next, update data every milliseconds, they're all uh, per data source. So I can go in here and select text, and I can create a new text data source. Well, let's, let's create a, a text file in our documents. Let's call it hello.text. Let's put inside of it, hi, this is some text that is updated automatically. Like so. I've just created a simple text file in Notepad and I've saved it to disk. Let's save that right now. So now I can go back to the data sources and I can browse for it on the local computer. Let's go to Documents, and let's browse for the Hello file, and click OK. And it will automatically bring the data in. Hi, this is some text that is updated automatically. So now I have a second data source. So let's go and create a new title. We can just add a new title, like so. Let's choose something like this. And let's put this one up now instead of the other title. Go to the Title Editor. From Data Sources, I simply select Text. And here we go, we've got some text. We can leave it all at the defaults, that's fine. And I can go through the same process of fine tuning the font size to fit it all in, like so. Um, let's make that font just a little bit bigger. Hi, this is some text that's updated automatically. So you can see this title here has some text from it. And we can show you real time updating by simply updating this file. So I want to remove the hi at the start. So it just says this is some text that's updated automatically. As soon as I click save, the text is immediately updated right here. So that's how you can update the text. You can have it on the network, and it will automatically update the title. And of course, as I mentioned before, you can combine multiple data sources in a single title. So you can see here, we have some data sources here. I'll change the description to the text. And I will choose the text column like so. And I will put that up. So you go, there's two data sources, the blog and the description. And let's just make this text bigger. There you go. We've just combined two different data sources into a single title and demonstrated how it automatically updates in real time and how you can move through the different sources. And you can see here the text file updates every 1,000 milliseconds. Because it's a local text file, you could have that as, a low, as low as 100 milliseconds. And the RSS continues to update every five seconds. And all of those data sources that you've added into the data sources area are saved when you save the preset. Once the preset's saved, it'll include those data sources. So when you load up the preset again, it will include those data sources automatically. So that is data sources in vMix 18. Click to watch another exciting vMix tutorial.